Hello and welcome to Titanium Works. Just starting a video series here on the build that you see in front of you. So it's going to be a Dakar style racer and part of it's been built by Tomcat Motorsport, part of it by Protection and Performance and uh, the majority of it by, by me and uh, my nearest and dearest. So I'm going to just do a quick run through off of my notepad here that you can see and uh, see if I can get everyone up to speed because this really should have been a video series starting a year ago. So it's going to basically be a road legal Dakar race car. It's um, uh, it's a tubular chassis that was designed by Paul, the owner of Tomcat Motorsport, I believe with the help of Drew Bauer before he passed. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's based along the lines of a very lightweight version of the Wildcat. So uh, somewhere, somewhere along the lines to a Tomcat and aimed more at a pure race car. Now I got an opportunity to take on board this. I was um, I was just finishing off my Defender project that you'll see on, on my videos under Defender Stumpy. And uh, I was talking to Paul about possibilities for a lightweight build of a Tomcat itself that I could turn into a, a more usable, uh, not quite a day-to-day -day drive, but a, uh, a, a certainly at least a weekly drive, if not several times a week. Uh, my Tomcat that I had some time ago, I used to drive every single day anyway. And uh, while we were working through things, uh, this came up for sale. He had uh, built this for a chap who had a Tomcat race team up north, and the guy never really sort of progressed it and never finished it and put it out for sale. And what 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 it was really was was uh, just just a pile of bits. So the base chassis arrived here uh, with a few modifications from Tomcat a year ago. And I started building it in at the end of October last year. I had a stop in January when I was out of work because uh, I just didn't have any funds to move forward. And then I've I've been continuing through lockdown this year on my own with it, and have got it to where where you see in front of you. So it's it's not sat fully on its suspension. There's no springs, um, but it's it's actually a pretty pretty decent step forward. Initially, it came with a five liter wildcat v8 um built built by uh, a friend of of tomcats up up north um and uh i wanted it front engine so we got a 4.6 the uh, the 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 v8 engine didn't come with it got a 4.6 and started uh, tomcat started putting the mounts in the front for me uh he also did the um steering box and pedal box and all that kind of stuff which i needed needed fitting in for me and it then came to me with the d with 4.6 diesel and uh, v8 engine in the front uh, at which point i i was umming and ahhing about whether to go petrol or diesel the fuel economy and range that i could get even with a a monstrous 300 liter tank uh just just put put me out of the running for what i wanted to do so so i went over to bmw uh, M57 diesel engine using the Ashcroft transmission interface plate system to an automatic gearbox. Had a automatic gearbox modified to work with the LT230 um, transfer box, and um, you know redid redid all the mounts through, uh, welded up and finished up aspects of the chassis that we needed to modify. Um, built a front end for the car which would go goes obviously around here and that is sat over there in the corner um worked on the interior worked on some some very coarse door frames at the time and some structure for the rear and started building through so i'll give you a bit more of a rundown and uh, but what we're going to do is we're, we're actually going to do a video per system so I'll do a video talking about the chassis and I'll film as much of the chassis aspects as I can, why we've done things like we have, um, why, why, we're, why we're aiming at, at, at various different routes uh, for, for finishing. And then, then we'll, we'll, we'll work through system by system. Chassis will be the first, then we'll look at some of the body panels and some of the peripherals. Then we'll look at the axles and transmission. Then we'll look at the um, engine and fuel systems, then the interior. Then we'll look at the electronic system, which is an absolute nightmare, been horrendously let down by countless people uh, over the electrical system, which has just been a trauma. In fact, the uh, the ECU system that was supposed to be plug and play that I bought from Rally Raid just really wasn't, didn't really work for, for us. 
and cost me cost me two thousand pounds for parts and then cost me two thousand pounds with an electrician to get absolutely nowhere I'm now at the stage where I've got a, a a very good guy working on the ECU system, but that's been with him for now now for for fourteen or sixteen weeks and hasn't come back. Uh, but he's but he's imminent, and at that point we'll do a a first start video. Um, I mean everything does run; it does fire into life, but it is not running on an ECU. So you, we, we're basically cheating by by adding tiny like half a cc of fuel to, to each cylinder and then and then cranking it just just to check that the system's fire but but the pumps will fire up so um bit of background let's see um i've always been a car guy been working on cars ever since i was a kid with my dad um even at one point i'd had had quite a lot of cars as, as a as a youngster i applied to top gear as uh for, for as a presenter for um uh, for the, the the what was then new Top Gear with with Jeremy Clarkson and Richard Hammond, and that was when James May got the, got the position. Um, but I was interviewed for it, phone phone interview, couple of phone interviews, which was quite interesting. I also actually applied um, some years after that for Milk Tray, uh, for the new Milk Tray man, and uh, I actually got quite far through. But uh, when when the when the interview um, the the face to face screen tests came up, I actually pulled out because. Uh, I was just far too busy with work, and work was obviously paying me. So anyway, back to cars. Um, so uh, I've had almost sixty cars now. Uh, let's uh, let's see a, a, a quick rundown. Of some of the some of the best. I've had three Lotus Esprit turbos, uh, early eighties kind of cars. I've had Lotus Exige, Lamborghini Gallardo, Audi R8, four Audi RS4s. So that's uh, that's one of the uh, early V6 twin turbos. Uh, three of the B8. V8 cars. Uh, I've raced in Sprint Series. Uh, I raced with an Audi Quattro diesel because my Esprit race car was was off the road and that was in the same category, so that was entertaining. And I was 1.8 seconds lap off of touring cars on a small figure of eight circuit, but still, you know, I was still quite entertained with that. I've had a Land Rover Tomcat race car. I've had two Defenders, three, four, five Discoveries. Um, as I say, Audi R8, Lamborghini Gallardo, Nissan GTR R35, which was 620 horsepower, fairly tame for those, I guess, but uh, still 0.6, 0.6 in 2.8. Um, yeah, and I've I've been building cars and working on cars all my life, which is which is lots of fun. Uh, it can be stressful, but uh, but it's pretty good. Uh, the Esprit race car was was built out out of three broken, crashed, and various states of disrepair older sprees that was a 2.2 turbo we actually rebuilt it for class to be a two liter using standard lotus parts uh parts from their their gt3 road car uh, which was a two liter on the on the standard slant engine head uh and we tuned that up and we actually got 219 brake horsepower on the rolling road running on on weber carbs running on four 445 Weber carbs, but because there were 45s on, on a 2 litre, it just didn't run smoothly. Should really have been down down on 38s. Uh, so that was that was pretty good fun, lots of learning curve. Uh, eventually I got into the supercars and off-roading, um, bought the Tomcat, uh, drove the Tomcat a lot, used it day to day, uh, put it into Paul at Tomcat for a full rebuild. He rebuilt it from the ground up for me to, to, to how I wanted it, and I used it daily. Um, work work was at the time around about 25 miles away and I'd trundle to and fro 25 miles each way in it you know he had defenders on because it was pretty noisy but he'd get more looks than the Lamborghini that I had at the same time so he became good friends with, with Paul uh, he's he's hugely helpful I mean hugely helpful guy you know he'd always stop for a chat if he can um, and uh, you know his 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 knowledge and, and engineering really even on this build has been just just phenomenal um, you know, there, there, there's so many thanks and, and shout outs that I should do, you know, maybe I'll do a separate video on that, but, but it's been really incredible, incredible, the support that he's given me. So back to this wagon. So what I want to do with this is, is basically have it as a, a usable off-roader that is race car through and through, but, but still compliant and comfortable enough to, 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 to do my daily run. Um, should should I want to to do a run up around Scotland uh, or or well into Europe, um, and and not to be so noisy in, inside that it that it becomes just deafening. 
And we've done a lot on sound insulation in the car. There's an awful lot of effort that's gone on. I did a lot of learning on on the the uh, the Stumpy on the on the Defender, which which was cut down from a from a 110 uh, heavy duty chassis down to a 104. Um, and we put Discovery two axles on that, and we we um, we worked really hard to get the sound deadening uh, in, and that that was absolutely covered in sound deadening and sound absorbing material, and it was good, but it it was just there's something about Defenders you just can't get there. So, so on this, what have we done? Let's see. So, so quick run around. So we're running Discovery two axles, which is great. Um, they're fully strengthened, tubed, and plated. We've got um, twin shocks uh, at each corner, so Fox suspension. So we've got standard coilovers without the bypass, and we've got the high bypass shocks themselves uh, with with the bypass reservoirs. We've got um, winch front and rear on plates that I put in. We've got, uh, as you can see here, a fairly hefty intercooler. It's it's very, very thick intercooler. It's not the biggest surface area, but I'm running a fan permanently on the back face of that. So as soon as ignition goes on, that fan starts up. Uh, then we've got the M57 engine here, which is being, being mapped and dealt with. Um, we'll be running around about 245, 250 brake horsepower and um, you know quite, quite a huge amount of torque. I've taken off the the oval mass airflow sensor and put on a round mass airflow sensor from a couple of years later it's exactly the same connector but it gives me a straight through so i'm running a snorkel right to the back um, interior we've got corbo bucket seats they're they're corbo rrbs they are the most comfortable bucket seats if if you're going to use them because they're an adjustable one and they're not a fixed back bucket seat they're not race proven they're not you know um, fia approved or anything like that but they they um, they are extremely com comfortable and extremely competent uh we've got flappy paddles in there so flappy paddles are are, are working through the compu shift system from Ashcroft or from CompuShift in America that, that Ashcroft have, have custom programmed in the UK for the Land Rover gearboxes. We've got a HP 24 um, EH gearbox, so it's the electric operated one, out of the P38, the back end of which has been modified by an engine builder up north to take the, uh, the back end of the V8 auto box, the HP 422. Um, V8 back end and that and then enables me to go straight into the LT230 in the LT the LT230 is a full Ashcroft high strength um, locking center diff and in front and rear I've got limited slips from Ashcroft with with all the all the high strength the, the strongest parts that they do so um, yeah so we've got some doors working flappy paddles the actual flap flappy paddles are from a Maserati because they were the best fit and and pretty pretty decent um, bodywork, so <laughs> and painting on the bodywork has been entertaining. Uh, I, I painted it myself, and um, yeah, got a very good finish actually. But uh, obviously, as they're not not the perfectly fitting fitting panels because it's a bit of a hodgepodge at the moment. Um, we're still we're still tweaking and getting things there. But yeah, it's it's working on. In the back, you'll see we have a twin battery setup. Um, if this is showing up on the camera anyway, uh, we've got a 140 liter stainless steel fuel tank. Um, an oil cooler over at the left there. We've got a large Alley Sport radiator with fans there. They're all programmed in to the controllers that we can see just over here. Uh, we've got air inlet to the cabin there, which can have a filter added into it very easily. It's not the massive masses of airflow that you would hope looking at a motor that size, but it's enough. Um, and that is running through a little heater core down the side there, just just by the side of that bleed. Uh, Poor, let's see, right, we've got the exhaust coming through, uh, twin batteries and a, another winch. And that really is, is the basic introduction. So I, I hope this has been entertaining. Um, I'd like obviously you guys to subscribe and, and like as best you can. And I will run through every system of this, one system a week over the next few weeks and uh, get, get, some, get some real content out there for you. I'm also just setting up a merchandise shop for, for some of the specialist parts that I find and um, and some really really cool cool goodies and and some some really cool clothing uh, including some some fireproof clothing for for welding and, and generally working in the garage which is which is pretty hard to find anyway I hope that that's helped um, a quick look here at the front end so as you can see I've built a front end with 
um, with some, some tubular box section, just some square box section. Originally this was going to be a much lighter front end, just riveted together. But um, the problem then was that, that you just nudge it and it, it kind of collapsed and fell off, so didn't really work. So I made some very, very simplistic framework uh, that, that just bolts on. So it's literally uh, six, six small bolts that, that, that whiz off with an Allen key and the whole front end comes off with an electrical connector. So, okay, well, thank you very much.